It's all about humanity. It's all about humanity. Hello, model citizens. Welcome to Humanity Junction. Tonight on Trains and Tech, we're going to get into a little bit of tech, I think. But before we get there, I feel like I'm being shot out of a cannon again tonight. I've got a bunch of stuff going on in here. I've been working on this valence behind me. We'll uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. I've got a uh, a new paint color that I've been using. Things are getting there. Things are getting there. I hope everybody is uh, is doing well out there. We should not have any uh, fire tonight. Uh, all of the tech that I am working with and turning on and playing with, uh, I think for the most part, it's uh, it's all by others. So, so yeah. Let's let's talk about the valence while we're getting into it. Why not? Let me, I think the best thing to do maybe is, let me see if I got this camera set up correctly, which I may or may not, um, but you can kind of tell, yeah, of course not was the, uh, was the appropriate answer. There we go. Uh, so you can kind of take a look if you see, uh, the two different colors, they're a little bit hard to make out. Let me see if, if adding a little bit of light actually helps. But the one color on the bottom is Sherwood Forest. And it is a matte finish, which means like every time you touch it, I don't know if you can see that, like every time you touch it, it makes marks on it. So that's no good. This up here, you can see it's got some gloss to it. It's a darker color. It's a... Uh, this was Sherwood Forest down here. This one up here is called Bavarian Forest. So it's more of a, uh, I don't know, a German green, I guess, uh, for the, the forests in Germany. But it is a much, uh, much darker green, but it is a semi-gloss so that you can touch it and it'll deal better with uh, being touched. I'm still... 
uh, still bolting it on, uh, connecting it. I've got some of the bolts swapped. Uh, I'm using black hardware with it. I think it looks nice, the black on the green. Eventually, I got to get to painting all of this, but all in due time. I do have here with me. Oh, of course, why is that camera frozen? Well, that's no good. Well, that camera works. So uh, this is the last piece of valence that I need to put up. It's for the valence that's actually right there in front of me. Uh, I painted it on the floor earlier today. And when I went to pick it up to try mounting it, I noticed that it had all kinds of uh, dog hair all over it. And my only assumption is that it's from my dog. Uh, and that I really should not be painting things on the floor. But yeah, I think it, I think it looks good. This is, you can kind of see, this is the dark color. Um, I don't have anything that's, I'm trying to find something that is officially Riverside green. That's not, that's not good, but it, it's hard, it's hard to tell colors over the video. Uh, but it does, I think it looks good. I think it goes well with what I am trying to accomplish here. Having the light valence to hide things, I think is a, is a good thing. I do have a lot of lighting, uh, particularly under the layout uh, to help kind of keep things focused. Yeah, the, the dog hair was not Andy, that is for sure. Uh, it is not hunter green. It is much, much darker uh, than that. Oh, there was no, no angel green, no green, angel green. Did I get green paint on the floor? Not this time. I have a, let me try this again. See if this is going to work now. I have a big roll of paper. It's like that brown craft paper. So I put this down on the floor and I use this to paint on. Uh, I use this sometimes too, to like cover the layout and, uh, it's, it's come in very handy. So I didn't get any green paint on the ground this time, but there is a big spot of green paint uh, right over here on the floor. And I did get green paint on my pants. So I, I didn't come out completely unscathed, but, uh, but I got it. I got it. Oh, are you uh, Envy? You're saying green with Envy? Uh, I did get to run some trains on the Riverside Transfer. You did, Andy. Remind me in a second. We'll uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Is there green paint in your dog? No. The dog, I don't let the dog down here when I'm doing certain projects. Uh, she would not keep her nose out of it, and uh, that would be a problem. Uh, definitely. Uh, I was. That's kind of the look I was going for was that you know, kind of finished, um, finished look. And of course I forgot to close my drapes, but if we go back to this camera for a second, uh, that's kind of what I was going for was almost that shadow box look, uh, but with the green paint instead of with, uh, black paint, just the, the green matches my colors and the green, uh, it, it's more earthy, uh, not quite as dark and being in a small room, I didn't want anything, uh, too overly dark. So I am going to let it cure for as long as I can, uh, wait without getting antsy. Like I just did. And I just, I'm like, I have to touch things, right? I've got boxes of N scale cars, just like everywhere sitting precariously. And I shouldn't have just touched them. And I did, and they fell over. And now my OCD is saying, Heath, clean up your cars right this minute. It's not like you've got 40 people watching you right now. Finish, it's not finished till I use the correct green. Uh, Cameron, if you want me to use the correct green, then you need to come over here and paint it the correct green. Although hopefully you'll be more distracted by uh, running trains and you won't even worry about it. Yeah, Dennis, it's funny, right? I mean, that's, uh, 
Um, you know, the, the, the three quarter ply is still here, but it's, uh, you know, we're, we're getting what is almost, um, almost a layout going on now. I'm actually, I, I haven't tried this, this gimbal, you can supposedly go 360 with it. I don't know if that's actually possible. I should probably look around the room before I go completely around the room to see what I'm going to actually end up hitting if I do uh, if I do go 360. Uh, so this is where I stand when I'm streaming. You can kind of see that in the corner uh, in the corner there. I had to switch as I I came around. Oh, that's a little fast. There's the door to get in. So the, what you're looking at right here, this is the northernmost point of the layout, and from there you head south. So as we keep going around, uh, this is the southernmost point of the layout right here, and this is there's a car float here in the front. Uh, there's a big building there in the back. But yeah, there's the little engine shed that I've been talking about constantly for the last two weeks or so. Uh, but this takes us kind of back uh, to the beginning. As, as Andy a step said, uh, Andy was over here on Sunday. Uh, and we actually got to run some uh, trains. Is it the floor going to be painted angel green? No. Uh, not enough screens? Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll get some more. Uh, I'm way ahead of you. You did also hurt your knee. I don't know, how, how's your knee doing? Uh, do you need us to send stickers? No, I'm not gonna put stickers on the face. I'm gonna keep it as uh, clean and minimalistic as possible. I don't want anything on the fascia that's going to be distracting from the, uh, the operations. That's funny. I like the juxtaposition of the orange door against the green valence. You know, I never thought of actually painting the inside of the door. I don't know if I asked the building if I could do that. I don't know if they would let me or uh, not let me. I'm staring at the orange door right now. It's The orange door is kind of one of those things that I see it so often that I have like completely blocked it blocked it out and like don't even notice it anymore. But it is funny that, it, yeah, Dennis, exactly. Uh, it is funny that you mentioned that because I should at least paint it from like the bench height up. Uh, neither BCF parts, uh, this is actually, well, long story, uh, this is a co-op, but this, space that I'm in right here is one of the commercial spaces. So I live in the co-op. I have an apartment building in the co-op, but this space itself, I am leasing from the co-op. So in, in a sense, I'm leasing from myself. The reality is they're going to have to repaint this whole thing when I leave anyway, right? So what's the big deal if I do paint the door? It would be kind of nice to paint it from the, you know, the level... It would be kind of nice to paint it from like right here up and make this, you know, from here up, make it this dark green, which would kind of make it completely, uh, completely go away. Yeah, I'm probably going to end up having to paint it as well. So ask your lesser for, for, yeah, I know, I know. So paint the door a nice brown. I'd probably do the green. I mean, that's, I, I think the green would be kind of the, the thing that would, uh, or the sky color. I could, I could do that as, uh, I could do that as well. That's funny. Vinyl wrap. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to start vinyl wrapping a door. And I think that would be, uh, significantly harder than just, uh, taking some paint to it. I do need to when I was repainting the valence, I didn't get it as close. Uh, I don't think you can't even really see it, but this is the old green here. And then this is the new green here. I need to tape off, uh, tape off the door and, and paint that edge. Uh, you can kind of see it down here 
though I did start painting this this side and you can see this here is the uh, the old green because I didn't want to get the green on the door but maybe I should maybe I should paint the door in flames uh, refer to your color wheel and use the 180 color out of Bavarian green I wouldn't know what that was um, yes, they're very expensive to replace, but I don't, I don't, uh, like, yeah, I would just repaint it. Sure, repaint it. What about all the stuff you nailed to the door? Okay, nothing is, na <laughs> nothing is nailed to the door. Uh, the, the door is something called metal. Uh, metal has, uh, magnetic properties to it. So all of the things on the door are just, they're just, um, just magnets. So there's there's nothing nailed to the door. It's just magnets on the door. So that'll that'll come off very, very, very easily without any <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I need to set up I, I got the YubiKey um dongles a while ago and I've never set them up. And I need to uh I need to do that. Uh, cancel. Okay, there we go. Um, yes, it is true. Not all metal doors are steel. Um, there could be aluminum doors, but should be a red. Well, it is a red. <laughs> it's right. Time to Marie Kondo the door. I I need to Marie Kondo the room. Did did you guys not catch? Did you guys not catch this corner as I went by this corner? Uh, it, it's just, I, <sighs> way too much stuff in way, way, way too small of a spot. Yeah, I might be just driving all this stuff up to Canada and drop it all off at the mini print studio for him to shrink it down. And then I can, you know, in 10 years when I want to use it, I can reinflate it and uh, make it real size uh, again. So, hey, Tierline Customs, I have definitely seen you uh, around, I think mostly on Facebook lately. Thanks for coming and visit them. Yeah, Drew, like I got them when I was on this whole security kick and I was going to update all of my passwords and everything and then you know um i don't think so because the apartment doors are not this color yeah the the mess is <laughs> dennis you have a lot more space though too yeah uh long story short andy and i were gonna go sell off some of our stuff because both andy and i have too much stuff but uh, we weren't able to make the timing work for a, uh, in two weeks, there's a swap meet, a local swap meet. So uh, yeah, it didn't work. So what is a YubiKey? Uh, I guess the best way to describe it is it's kind of an enhanced security thing. Um, you know, like you have to type a password into a website. There are certain websites where if you do not have the USB YubiKey installed in your computer, uh, you won't be able to log into the website. So like for a bank or for something like that. Uh, so if you're like traveling or whatever, you might need to leave your laptop somewhere or whatever, you just pull the YubiKey out and then uh, nobody can get in. There you go. Second form of authentication. It is a hardware method of two-factor authentication. Should we talk about some tools and some stuff? I got some stuff in front of me that I thought maybe we could talk about for a second. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, let's start off with this just before I completely forget and everybody runs out of here screaming for the door. Uh, I am going to be hosting Sidetrack Sunday for the first time in a long while on Sunday, uh, March 31st. It is the fifth Sunday of the month. So there is not any uh, standard usual person doing it. So eight o'clock on Sunday, 
Uh, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Uh, maybe we'll be running trains. Uh, not completely sure uh, what's going to happen, but uh, yeah, sidetrack Sunday. So on my channel, <laughs> this was I. I know everybody in the green. Uh, yes, uh, this was the green that whatever this company was when I bought this cup uh, had. Uh, it's, it's not exactly, uh, not exactly the color. Yeah. So there's some of the other sidetrack Sunday guys, uh, John and or Rick, if you guys want to post up the links for the other sidetrack Sunday people, uh, it is not April 1st. It is the day before. So it will not be a, uh, it will not be a typical, uh, Heath live stream. I guess you can say that. Uh, as I was cleaning up today, I picked this up and I was about to put it away. And I was like, you know what? I should maybe mention why I've got tape on this because it might not seem obvious to most people. And I ended up doing it because what it does is I was, I've been using these blocks to hold down the track. And I've also been testing the layout why wall I was weighing down and gluing in on the tracks. And I was trying to figure out like, how can I do the two things at the same time? So after way, way too much thinking, uh, I, I just put tape on it. So initially I put tape on the one side thinking that that's how I was going to lay it. And then I thought I was going to put it on anyway. So most of my one, two, three blocks are now taped because I am still uh, gluing down some of the various tracks, but I thought it was a, you know, it's not something I necessarily thought of like, I don't know. Oh, is that, <laughs> that's funny. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it, it happens to all of us, right? So I, I just thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd show that. Well, I could. Uh, this is another thing that I just bought. I keep finding myself in a situation where I have to screw something in and all of my regular screwdrivers, you know, don't fit. Even this little stubby screwdriver, if I had to screw something in, it takes up a lot of space. Uh, so I've been suffering, <laughs> suffering is not the right word, but I've been trying to screw some things in into some small spaces. And I said to myself, I'm just going to buy this. Uh, it's a right angle screwdriver. This one's from Klein. It's slightly more expensive than the cheap ones. But if you, uh, if you couldn't tell, like this is, this is a Klein, I think this is, Klein, yeah, this is a Klein stubby as well. This is a Klein tools. Uh, one of the things that I do like about uh, about this is that it's got a little finger hole on it, so when you're bored, you can uh, you can kind of play with it. Uh, but yes, um, it is ratcheting as well as Andy pointed out. Uh, there are some options that aren't ratcheting, but I was like, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna spend the big bucks. I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. So yeah, it, it's a fidget tool. And <laughs> the funny thing is John, John's saying, don't play with it. Uh, I was actually, the first time I did this, I was actually kind of afraid it was gonna like fly off my hand. And I've just got so much stuff everywhere in here that I was kind of nervous that uh, I was gonna fling it across the room, but uh, it's a Klein right angle screwdriver, part number 65200, comes with five bits, uh, the two Phillips, the two flats, as well as a quarter inch, um, what's this called, like a uh, socket adapter, quarter inch socket adapter. So I splurged and uh, hopefully this is gonna going to help me out. Part of where I keep trying, what I keep needing it for lately, I'm just going to show you, is, oh, you can't, you won't be able to see. It's not high enough. Uh, but I've got all these uh, floodlights. These are all uh, lights that I'm using to light the layout. And to screw them in, it just doesn't give you, doesn't give you much room, even if you like fold it out 
there's still not a lot of room underneath. So this, this little guy here is going to help me uh, should I decide at some point to relight the room, which hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm done. Uh, Bernard says, fling it, we could find, take bets on which cam it will take out. I hope it doesn't take out um, any cameras, but yeah, it's, it was a good, uh, it was a good fidget spinner, um, fidget spinner things. Yeah, there's a lot of behind the scenes. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting, I guess, to, to see what's going on. Things are Things are a bit of a mess for lack of better term, but like, you know, here are the two lights that are on my face. The lights that are up there are the lights for when I like back up out of the way um, a little bit. Uh, this is my, you know, my streaming setup right here with the chat and all that kind of stuff. Got the time right there. Everyone's always trying to tell me what time it is. Uh, it would be hard for me to uh, not find it. Yeah, if I did fling it, uh, maybe I'd find the banana. Uh, that that would be my my hope. Would be finding the banana. This is my main north yard. Uh, when you see the overhead camera, this is what we're looking at. Is this area right here? I do have. I don't know. If, I don't know if you can see them in the view or not. Yeah, you can see the tops of them. Uh, this is my LNLX Riverside transfer car. Uh, this is the Split Rock Mining Company car. Uh, this is the Black Rock Central car. These are three cars that were made by other YouTubers uh, for me. Uh, obviously, the Riverside Transfer one is for my layout. Uh, the Split Rock Mining Company one is so that I could ship some stuff off to uh, Thomas at the Split Rock Mining Company. And then uh, the Black Rock Central one is so I can send some stuff down to Maine uh, to Joe Raider. Uh, do you turn the floodlights off so that the shadow box comes in full light or, or dim them, uh, at least? So, uh, all of these lights are completely, uh, controllable. So, uh, my phone right now that I'm using for this is where I can control them on. Uh, I can also control them via, uh, that Amazon device that you speak to. I won't speak to it right now just because, uh, but keep an eye on these lights up there. Uh, I do have a way to turn those off so you can see when those are off. Uh, it does definitely give you a better, um, a better view. I'm trying to think, I can't turn them on unless I talk. Uh, I do have uh, thunder and lightning as well over in this corner back here that I can turn on. Uh, so it does a whole kind of lightning thing under there. I can turn the lights blue, which is something I will do sometimes uh, kind of simulate simulate some uh, night running and stuff like that. Uh, yes, if you have if you have a mini prints, well, a mini prints one, anything, what, what I'm trying to do, one of the games that I'm playing that I, that I think would be a lot of fun and I don't know, uh, how other people think about this, but what I want to do as a person on social media is I want to try and get cars from other railroads so that I can ship product to other people's railroads. Uh, for example, like John 2618 just, just popped in. Uh, John said, oh, it didn't pop up. Let's try that again. John said more rolling stock inbound. We'll have a whole conversation about that. Um, like if I had some uh, Somerset and Raritan car on my layout, I would be able to ship stuff to uh, John 2618. Yeah, so mini prints, right? Like if he needs something off my layout for resin or, or anything like that, uh, I want to ship things from my layout to other people's layout in the community. I am primarily 
running 40 foot box cars. So if you can get me a 40 foot box car, that would be my, uh, you know, my first choice would be to get a 40 foot box car. If you don't have a 40 foot box car, uh, these guys that are back here, this is a 40 footer. Uh, this is a 50 and this is a 50. I, I'm going to run whatever, but uh, I really want to, uh, I really want to get, uh, get more cars from other people in the, in the community as well. Like, you know, Rick, if you had an FBMRR car, I would love to get a 40 foot box car of it made up. I will show, um, I will show off uh, my plans for my personal cars for my, for my railroad uh, once I get a couple more of them. If you guys don't know, let's just move this over here. Uh, so John 2618 was saying that there are some more cars on the way. Uh, this, this one here is already, uh, this was painted by John 2618. This is a transfer caboose. So I got that guy on the layout over here in Riverside Yard. Uh, this is a stand-in locomotive, but rumor is there might be a Riverside transfer locomotive coming very, very soon. Uh, email's the wrong term, I'm sure. Uh, there's no way to email them. I would, uh, you know, we'd have to just sort of coordinate it and, and whatnot. And it's not about being so literal that I would like literally send like Split Rock Mining Company car 68 and then he would run car 68 on his layout. It's more just the idea that the transportation system that we are operating on when we're at my layout is connected to these other layouts um, around the area as well. Uh, Rick, I don't know when I'm getting down to Timonium again. Uh, that's a very good question. I'm spending a lot of my traveling this year, at least doing uh, op sessions. Uh, and I do want to try and take a bigger trip later in the year to the other side of the country, but I don't, I don't know when I'll get back down to Timonium. How much wiring do I have left? Well, one of the items on my workbench is my list of notes. Uh, these are sort of the short term things that I need to do. Actually, I think I've adjusted this turnout. I think this is gonna be okay. Uh, I want to swap out the Kato couplers on the locomotives. Uh, that locomotive there on the left is a Kato locomotive. The couplers do not couple up well with micro train stuff, so I do need to swap them out. I've never done it before. I'm a little nervous about doing it, but that's one of the things I need to do. I just realized uh, chat's not scrolling. Um, does anybody? Yes. Unfortunately, Island Ops is the following weekend, so probably, uh, probably won't happen. <laughs> Drew, you know what's funny about that is that sometimes I just need a piece of paper. Sometimes just, just having you know paper is just, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, well, that's true. Uh, let's see. Yes, John did paint them in the right green. He painted them XF70. Um, yeah, <laughs> AJ, exactly. I, I was giving them a pretty hard time the other night, uh, giving uh, Mike a hard time. But So these are my top priority items to get done. I'm going to try and get as many of them done as I can before uh, this weekend. I don't know how much I'm going to accomplish, though. Uh, so some of the, just to go through all of the items on here, just so you can kind of see. So uh, set the turnout direction. Uh, that's not directly a wiring thing, but it, it, uh, it involves the wiring system. In order to set the turnout direction, I need to first install a 12 volt power supply. 
the 12 volt power supply runs <clears throat> uh, runs the turnouts in this section. So I want to install the power supply so the polarity is correct. Turn those on. I want to install the power supply so the polarity is correct before I start uh, setting things. But I, I need to set the uh, direction that the turnouts throw. After I set the direction the turnouts throw, then I have more wiring to do. Uh, I need to uh, wire, uh, correctly wire up the frogs so that they're the correct polarity. And then I need to correctly wire up the uh, LEDs that I have uh, mounted in the, um, in the bench work. So a little bit more wiring there to go. Uh, yeah, so the MP5s, the MP5s are uh, what are in uh, this corner here. Um, so this section here is going to be an elevated section of the railroad. So I wanted things shorter so that I could eventually, basically, I'm going to take a bunch of this out and build bridges and stuff. But that's that's way off. Uh, paint the fascia and the valence. Valence, I got the valence mostly painted. I don't think I'm going to get the fascia painted. Uh, I just don't have enough time for it to dry uh, before the weekend, so I don't know if I'm going to get to that or not. Uh, the roof reporting marks. So uh, as you guys can, let's see, can you see? That one's kind of hard to see because it's silver. Let's slide down to another one. If I can get these out of the way. So I am adding the reporting marks uh, to the top of the cars. It's just this piece of I-beam that goes on top of the car and it just makes it easier to identify the cars. The cars are very hard to read the reporting marks off the sides of them. So it makes it uh, it makes it very handy for uh, identifying the cars quickly for uh, for operations purposes. As you can see, though, as I'm pulling this out, I don't have one here. I don't have one here. So I, I need to make up some more. Uh, none of these cars back here have them. So I would like to get them done. I have the I-beams already painted and cut here. Uh, this is This is how they start. They start as uh, 279 evergreen polystyrene I-beams, uh, 3 8 inch I-beams, 9.5 millimeter wide I-beams. Then they uh, look like this after I paint them all brown. Uh, after I paint them all brown and get the, the mostly painted, I cut them into these little small pieces here and then using I don't know where it is right now, but uh, using the label maker, then I make up the um, the labels here for the top of the car. So I'm trying to get that done so that uh, the ops this weekend is a little more e a little more easy. It it can be a little easier. More oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I do also have color coding. Um, that it, uh, I have a small, uh, I have some small colored pieces of plastic that you can put inside the groove that's cut to fit in there. So you could go and if you wanted to like mark all of the cars that you need to pick up as red, um, if that's the way you want to do it, that is uh, possible. Um, the reason they're brown is because I run a lot of these I'm running a lot of these yellow reefers. The, there's yellow on the side. They're brown on top. So that's why they're brown. They will not be angel green. Uh, they, uh, they stay on fine. The only time they don't stay on fine is uh, if you derail a car and then reach for the car. But instead of reaching for the car, you uh, knock the cars off the track and the cars go in one direction, then they fall off. I do have, the other thing that I have is this stuff. Uh, you guys have probably all seen uh, blue tack. 
Uh, this is just the white version of it. I didn't get the, the blue stuff because the blue stuff could potentially stain the colors of the cars. So I got the white stuff so that it doesn't stain the cars. I will at some point uh, be sticking them, you know, on a little bit with this. That way they can come off. But just like you say, if, if you do bump into them, uh, they won't go uh, flying uh, flying across uh, the room or, or anything like that. Exactly, they're rusted. Is, is white blue tack called white tack? It, it's from 3M, but I, I don't remember what it's, uh, what it's called. My goal, my goal on my layout is I want my layout to be as easily accessible as possible for your average and beginner operators. So your more advanced operators are probably gonna come in and see some of this stuff on the layout and kind of be like, you know, what the heck? Um, oh, that's interesting. You'll have to tell me, send me a link for museum wax. I'm not sure I know what that is. I have some wax like for sticking like people down to stuff but I think I ended up throwing it away because it was like really, uh, really terrible. Um, I did think about the magnet thing. That would just be so much, so much work. Uh, so I, um, what were we talking about? Oh, I want to make the, the layout easy to operate for beginner and or intermediate operators. Advanced operators might come here and think that uh, I'm a little bit nuts, but I'm okay with that. I think it's worth some of these little simplistic things um, as well. Uh, another example of one of the things that I'm doing that came up over the weekend is when Andy was here operating, Andy was like, uh, you know, he, could, he didn't know where things are. And I was like, what, you can't read my mind? So this is just card stock. I made these up temporarily. Uh, these are going to get attached to the fascia, so when the fascia dries a little bit more, uh, we'll attach these to the fascia. But it'll just help uh, help make it easier to um, to identify uh, all the various uh, areas and stuff like that. So uh, what I want to get done for the next work section is install the 12 volt power supply and start setting turnout directions. It's a good segue. Let's talk about why. Um, I, I printed these out. These are also on cardstock. Uh, I'll, I'll find somewhere to, to hang them, but I've made these as digital panels. And this panel is on, uh, uh, can be on a tablet, but I've also just made different uh, different panel things for each section. So you're you're going to see all my fingerprints, but that's just the way it is. So here is uh, one of the tablets. Uh, this is the tablet that is in the uh, the north yard. I've now named it Croton Harmon Yard. I was just calling it North Yard, but that was uh, really confusing Andy uh, because, so it's now called Croton Harmon Yard. Uh, this tablet uh, sits right here next to the yard. When I turn the tablet on, it is going to load JMRI and tell me that it is, it was just working. Why isn't it working now? Something obviously has gone very wrong. Uh, let's come back over here. You can watch me try and fix it. Yet yeah, for some reason, of course. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to use all this technology on your layout. And the first thing I do is turn it on and for whatever reason, I must have done something and ended up turning off 
the JMRI computer. So that's the disadvantage of using JMRI is the JMRI computer goes off. So we're gonna have to wait for that computer to come back on and uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, no blue smoke, but um, yeah. So uh, Andy was over on Sunday. He was my first operator on the layout. We started the day off with just Andy running stuff. I wasn't sure how that was initially going to go. So I, I just let him run the train. I, I knew the train would be able to run. I wasn't sure if we could add more than one operator. So when Andy started running his third train, I ran a train as well. Uh, of course, just because it's the way it is, we both ended up at this section of the layout at the same time and the two of us were standing side by side. My train was going north, his train was coming south. We both worked this area past each other. It worked out really, really well. So that gave me some confidence on uh, the operations of the layout. But yeah, so, so this is a map that I'm gonna hang somewhere uh, that basically shows the op scheme of the layout. This is the very north side over here, I guess where it says north. Uh, this would be the south side. Because of the length of the layout, it basically goes here and then you connect it and it goes, uh, you know, goes down and around. Um, so I've got these, so every little area, like you can see here, this says Riverside Yard. So I will have a label that says Riverside Yard. Here is Riverside Freight. So I have a label there as well uh, that, that says Riverside Freight. I couldn't come up with a good name for the team track. Uh, that was kind of, I don't know if disappointing is the right word, but uh, it's, for some reason the command station's off too. I don't know what I did. I, I, must, have, I must have done something uh, something wrong, but you know, that's, that's par for the course for me, right? Uh, file load content and panels, make sure I'm going to load the last one. Oh, hey folks, it's coming. It's coming. This is, I guess it, it is like, it's, it's good and it's bad, right? I mean, uh, yeah, I've got this issue where this, this didn't, uh, this didn't come up, but you know, it's all digital. So, you know, you can, you can kind of solve the problems uh, quickly and get things uh, back up and running. And I just realized I'm gonna need to build a train in a second as well. I probably shouldn't have closed that. Uh, what are we talking about with Discord? I missed something. I could vouch it happened on Sunday, it did. Um, photos or didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't take too many photos. We were just, uh, we were just operating, um, as well. So the reason I don't want to use paper is because I, I don't want to fight with, I, I don't want to fight with, um, of course now it's still not loading. Uh, what is that thing called that I don't want to fight with? A printer. Man, that was tough. Connection refused. What is going on? I'm connected to the internet. I'm using something called Fully Kiosk. It should be loading. I've got everything up right now. Why isn't this working? <sighs> yeah, none of the panels are loading. Oh, the web server never started, that's why. I need to start the web server. It's almost like I'm new at this, right? Like I've never done it before or something like that. Like you'd think at this point, like I would have some clue as to, uh, as to what I'm doing, but no, I I'm still, you know, I'm still making it up as I go. Um, 
hopefully that just started the JMRI web server. It didn't seem to actually, there we go. Oh my. All right, let's see. Has anybody made any snide comments? Yeah, so Aaron, Aaron, I, okay. Not that I'm a genius, but it, it sounds like we thought about it at the same, uh, ex same exact time. Yeah, check out Iron Planet Hobbies, uh, if you would. Uh, they do support the channel. A lot of the electronics on this layout have come from Iron Planet Hobbies. Uh, not the tablets, but uh, all the track, all of the decoders, the command station, all that stuff came from them. Uh, you can't beat the discount code. So uh, you can look down in the chat or down in, sorry, chat, down in the description. There's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of good stuff uh, down there as well. See, this, Russ, this is, I mean, you're always fighting, uh, fighting a printer. Uh, but here, okay, so here, what do you say? This is why I'm waiting to do any panel stuff. Yeah. So the panels, I uh, I built all the panels before I finished with the layout because I wanted to use the panels to test the layout. Uh, so all of these, uh, they're not connected right now, so nothing's happening. Uh, but what I need to do is I need to set the turnout direction of the turnouts. Uh, you can see some of them are ra randomly changing right now because uh, all of the turnouts have like sensors and feedback. So they're giving feedback and they're changing based on the feedback. But uh, yeah, so this is one of the things that I'm using uh, the tablets for here on the layout. And I have different tablets. So that one is for Croton Harmon Yard. Uh, if we come over to this side and I turn this one on, which I probably could have done uh, before, but uh, this is the one for Riverside Yard. Uh, and that's not all of it. It has zoomed funny. And the zoom is killing me right now. Let's try this one. There we go. So th this is the Riverside Yard panel, and this one's also zoomed wrong, but it's a little bit better. So I've got panels like all around uh, around the layout. Uh, here's another you know little guy that I got here. What I like about the panels is that should I want to change anything, it is very easy to change stuff. So for example, Andy was getting confused because I had this labeled as North Yard and I had this industry over here labeled as North Industry. So, you know, it, Andy doesn't know the layout, so he just sees North and he doesn't know like what, what is what. So the easiest thing for me to do was I just changed the name. So this track back here, this industry track is now called Croton on Hudson, which I admit is probably too similar to Croton Harmon Yard, but at least they're different. If you're from New York, you know the difference. Uh, but I just renamed it Croton, Har you know, Croton on Hudson. Uh, this is Croton Harmon Yard. Uh, back here is Selkirk uh, Yard. So I've renamed them so that uh, you know, you now know where stuff, different stuff is. I did something similar here in Manhattanville as well. Uh, I just went and I, uh, I just renamed the panels. So going from an op session on Sunday to, uh, you know, next Sunday for another op session. Now I've got, you know, the, I've got everything labeled here. Um, this track is going to be FB web, FW web, which if you know the area, you know that that is FW web. Um, but it was just easier, you know, for me to just relabel all that stuff. Dennis said, how long does it take me to build all these panels? I, so I started building the panels months ago. Part of why I started building the panels months ago was so that 
I could keep editing and editing and editing them. So as I learned, I would keep, you know, keep editing as I go. Uh, I do not have occupancy set up yet, but everything is going to be wired uh, for occupancy. <laughs> I I think at some point this fascia is all going to be redone. Uh, I have a feeling that that is coming. Uh, no, so all of the switch motors work off of the JMRI panels, every single one. The color on the panel might not be correct. And the frog wires are not wired up. But when Andy was here last Sunday, he used the panels to switch the entire layout with, without, any, uh, without any issues uh, at all. So, uh, will I have anything throw as a result of occupancy? Not as a result of occupancy. I will set it up so that things will not throw because of occupancy. So if a train is in a block and that block contains a turnout, you will not be able to throw the turnout in that block until the train is out of that block. So all of my turnouts, not all of them, the, a lot of the turnouts are their own separate block. Some of the turnouts are a part of, you know, another block. Um, but yes, yeah, so that will be a part of the programming. I'm doing this in stages though, right? So the first step is just getting the panels controlling the turnouts. Then I'm going to get into the occupancy and all that other stuff afterwards, but I'm doing it step by step uh, over time. So speaking of step by step over time, uh, this is another little technology thing that I've been playing with. Uh, if you guys have not seen it or are not familiar with it, let me get let me get this camera over here so that we can kind of talk about this a little bit. Um, so I have uh, as well um, a proto throttle and uh, I got a tablet next to it. You're probably saying, why the heck do I have a, uh, a tablet with a proto throttle? Well, it started out, it started out that I was just gonna put the proto throttle on the stand. And the reason for that is that the proto throttle represents the control stand in the locomotive. So I wanted a, a way to permanently have it mounted on a stand, I guess you can say. But if you're moving around the layout, I wanted you to be able to move it with you. Uh, some people uh, have protothrottle holders on the fascia of their layout, and they move it from one holder to the other. That was definitely one option but I, I wanted it on a stand and I, and I had these stands. I have these stands for uh, the video stuff that I take. So, uh, you know, I had the monopod, I had a bunch of the stuff. Uh, this is some of the stuff that's used. Uh, these are Arca Swiss plates. So everything is Arca Swiss. Uh, this is the tablet holder that I'm using. So it's all just standard camera uh, camera stuff. Uh, most of what I had, some I didn't have. But what this allows us to do, and Andy, uh, Andy actually ran the layout using the tablet. And this is another reason that I'm kind of liking the JMRI thing. I do eventually, I think, want to go to car cards and waybills. You can see in the back here, I've got car card and Weibo racks because that's, that is ultimately how I do want to, uh, to run the layout is with car cards and waybills. But in the meantime, while I am still figuring things out, we can come here and we can actually get my switch list up on the layout. So I'm going to tip this up just slightly. Let's see. Tip up, tip up. Come on. There we go. 
So up here, this is JMRI that I got right here. I'm gonna go into Operations Pro. I'm gonna to go to a train. I'm going to build um, two trains. So I just built, I just built two trains just that fast, right? Uh, all of the train, all, all of the car locations are in JMRI. Operations Pro just randomly selected uh, a bunch of cars. So if I refresh this page, it now shows you. Let's come back down and let's get a little bit closer, shall we? So now I've got two trains right there already. I can click local turn one and I can bring up the manifest. And this is all the work that needs to be done for local turn one. Local turn one goes from the north to the south, ends back in the north. So this work, you would start in Croton Harmon Yard and work your way down. Uh, if you can't read the text because it's too small, you can just make it bigger. But now you've got everything right here. So if you are a single operator on the layout, this gives you your, you know, your control of your locomotive. It gives you your switch list all in one uh, fancy place. And if you need to uh, change things, um, you know, like let's say, oh, like I, I'm actually local turn two, I'm not local turn one. Uh, you know, you, you just pick a different train. There's no paperwork to get lost. There's no printer to, uh, to screw up. Lynn, yes, 100%, uh, this will all be able to uh, be operated remotely. Uh, the locomotive roster is all here. Uh, you can, this is on the web panel. So you can, uh, if I gave you the login, you could go and log in. You could select up one of the locomotives on your computer at home and you can run trains as well. One of my goals, as I've said, is to uh, get more people engaged in model railroading. So one idea that I have is that I am going to have a conductor here locally that's going to be doing like the pickups and, and that sort of stuff. And the engineer will be remote and they'll be on radios together and they will be able to, uh, you know, the conductor will be able to radio to the engineer and they will be able to run the trains from here. So this control stand won't make as much, you know, sense when that's going on, but, you know, should, should I want this to just be for the conductor, you can just take the proto throttle off and just use the tablet mount or vice versa. I could take the tablet off and just use the proto throttle. Uh, somebody was mentioning that uh, the stand is wobbling. I see Russ said that earlier. I got the stand up pretty high right now uh, just because of, uh, you know, because I'm showing it and just the way things are. Uh, if you want to give me a second, I will I'll lower it down. Um, so this is probably a little bit better of a height for operations. Um, so it's a little bit, uh, it's definitely more stable here, less, uh, less rocking. If I, uh, what do you call it? Tilt down. That's the word tilt. If I tilt down, you can see there is an ankle weight down here at the bottom. So I'm not worried about it falling over, uh, in any way. And you know, I, I am not a locomotive engineer. But I am going to guess if you are sitting in the cab of a locomotive and you are running down the tracks that uh, it is probably not, you know, whisper smooth or whatever, however you want to say it. So, uh, so, uh, so, t uh, so can you technically have a remote control locomotive on a model railroad where you already remotely control non-remote control engines? Yes. Yeah, so Andy used just the tablet setup. Uh, he didn't, we didn't have the proto throttle on it at the time, uh, just the tablet setup. And uh, he said it worked pretty well. The big change that I made from when Andy was here though, 
is that if you notice, it's now a dark background with white text. And I changed that around just because I thought the bright white of the, uh, it wasn't in dark mode. So I made it in into uh, dark mode. Yeah, Whisper Smith. I don't, you know, sometimes when you're having these conversations, you completely lose track of everything and anything that you are trying to say. And it is, it is Riverside, uh, or, yeah, it is Riverside Transfer Green. So yes, and yeah, uh, Andy's right. So it's easier to read, less get, uh, less glare with the with the darker uh, background um, as well. Uh, we had tablets on our trains too. Used to used a workflow program installed allowed us to modify our. Oh, there you go. Had access to customer track plans and our operating rules. So, Joe, you're saying as a as a one to one scale engineer, obviously not this close together, but you would have had your control stand either to the left or the right, and then uh, some sort of digital access thing as well. So, so what I'm building isn't completely uh, out there. I, I'm not completely nuts. I'm mostly nuts, but I'm not completely nuts. Which, which I like being somewhere, somewhere in the realm. Yeah, okay. The conductor had the tablet. That makes a lot of sense. And that's, in model railroading, if you are a one person crew, you are technically the engineer and the conductor at once. So that would be the, you know, the single control stand setup. If, uh, if you are able to have a team of two, then yes, we would just, uh, you know, we can just easily separate these. I mean, I showed you how, you know, easily these separate if we wanted to go back to a, you know, full system, this just uh, clicks in here. If you wanted to switch these around so that they were in a different orientation, uh, it's easy, easy to switch them around because of, uh, because of what it is. Yeah, you know, compression. It happens with all your digital stuff, uh, stuff as well, but I, I, I don't know yet. I've used a proto throttle. I've used switch lists. I haven't really used the switch list on a tablet except for last week. But I think I I, I think this is um, I think this is a setup I'm I'm gonna like for this. Uh, I, I I think I think I like this. So interesting what Andy just said, right? So I'm left-handed, leave it like that. So I'm right-handed. So because I am right-handed, I'm going to I'm going to show you because I'm right-handed, I think this is how a right-handed person would operate this. If I am working this area of the layout right here, I have my conductor stuff here. I've figured out what I'm going to do. And then as I'm here, I think I would want this on the right side of me and I wouldn't want to be reaching over the tablet. I think I want to have this here. So as a right-handed person, I think this is the setup for a right-handed person. And then the tablet's off to the right. Because if you're a left-handed person, it would mean this is on, on this side, right? And then you are reaching over, over the iPad. So I, I don't, you know, I don't know. John, I am very glad that you, uh, you reworded that because I could not for the life of me figure out what you were trying to say. So yeah, you're used to commenting. Uh, Joe says, I'm liking your ideas. I'm wondering if I can use a tablet for my operation, operators getting their track warrants, clear up a lot of clutter and confusion. I don't know uh, what, first question would be, what are you using to generate your track warrants? Uh, 
you know, if it's, you could set the tablet up where it has access to a file server and, you know, you could just print things to a PDF and then people could just go into the file server and bring up the, bring up the PDF. Um, yeah, I'm sure that helps, right? <laughs> the learning curve. I'm always folding the throttle in my left hand and skewer in the right hand. Um, yeah, I guess that is how I do it too, now that I think about it. That is, that is true. Uh, here's one other thing. Well, I got a couple other things to show people. If, if people are still interested, if people are still here, I'll keep showing stuff. So uh, here's another little project that I worked on. Uh, let's see if I can get this up out of the way for now. Uh, I worked on, I actually just did this today. This again was one of those projects that I absolutely did not need to do, but you know, uh, basically this is where all my throttles are going to go. I've got my TCS throttles here. Uh, this is the UWT 100. Uh, this is the UWT 50. Uh, it took me a little while to figure out you know, where to put these to get them all in. Uh, here is a holder for a proto throttle. So if it's not being used on a stand, um, it can just uh, sit in here. But if somebody wants it, it's easy enough to grab. And this is my favorite of the Digitrax throttles, which is the Digitrax UT6D. Uh, I, I will use the UWT50 first because I like yard mode but there are times where I just want the Digitrax throttle and I just use the Digitrax throttle. The iPhone holder is in your back pocket. You just reach around and grab your butt and it's right, so it'd be right. Uh, actually, I keep mine on this side so that your iPhone holder would be right there. I can't believe I just showed my butt. Uh, there are, uh, yes, I don't have any NCE stuff because at one point, uh, DigiKeys was going to make an NCE version uh, that, or an NCE converter to convert from uh, LocoNet to NCE. Uh, they never got that done, so uh, I can't unfortunately use any uh, NCE throttles. Uh, but yeah, so this kind of gives us, uh, you know, it, it, whatever people want to use, it just gives, uh, it gives options. One last thing that I want to talk about is that I have a bunch of cameras on the layout, right? If, if we go here, um, I, I can kind of step around the layout and I've got all of these cameras up uh, over the layout so that you can see different areas of the layout. Some of them are better focused uh, than others as I've been working on the valence. I've probably bumped into a couple of them. When I laid out these cameras, my first thought was how do I get the most coverage of the layout from the cameras? What I did not think about is what is the best location to put the cameras for me to stream the operating session? So we were on uh, Discord the other day on Sunday and I started uh, streaming the op session to discord and I, um, and I realized that when you're switching a train back and forth, that you're going in and out of the one, uh, the one camera view. And that was, you know, that was a problem that, that didn't, that didn't work well, right? Like I was switching from showing this end of the yard to switching back to this end of the yard to switching back to that end of the yard. So, you know, I kept switching back and forth uh, and that just didn't, uh, didn't really work out. And what I realized was I didn't mount the cameras in the right spot. So another kind of wiring project, kind of other project is moving all the cameras so that they're in a uh, better 
location so that I can share these op sessions. I would love to be able to, um, you know, share the op sessions, share, you know, what I'm up to. Uh, the cameras will also give away for, let's say uh, you're a remote engineer and you want to be able to kind of see what's happening. You could, you know, bring up one of the cameras remotely and, and you'd be able to see the view for your camera. So if I had multiple people acting as remote engineers, they could each bring up their own different camera that is, you know, for the different areas of the layout and, you know, you know show whichever one they want to show. So I need to move the cameras. They're just in a, a terrible place. Uh, the cameras are Wi-Fi cameras, but they require USB for power. So there are USB cables run all over the place to power the cameras, which I now need to move. Uh, so they would be much easier to move if, uh, if I didn't have that. But they work okay. It's just if you're the guy, you know, trying to move them around, uh, they're not uh, they're not as easy. Uh, Derek said the camouflage worked. The rails look like they're three different colors. I did actually use three different colors. Uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but uh, I used uh, this AK uh, rust base coat. I used a humbral. Uh, dark brown, which is actually the lightest of the three colors, uh, and I used uh, the camouflage. So what what you're seeing are actually three colors. So I did uh, I did use them. Uh, I'm not going to Velcro stuff to the layout. I have seen people uh, do that. I know some people uh, like doing that, but uh, I, I have lanyards so people can wear a lanyard. Um, right now, all of the UWT and the Digitrack throttles fit really well in the car card boxes. So I am not going to put, uh, I'm not going to put Velcro on the layout. I've also seen this, the pop sockets for the phone throttles. I am personally not a phone throttle guy. Like it's not, uh, it's not how I enjoy operating. You can bring your phone, connect up to the Wi-Fi and operate the layout off of your phone if you want. Uh, I'm not necessarily gonna be set up, uh, you know, with phone storage. Although I guess you could, I mean, we've, you know, where, where all this stuff is, there are, you know, there's enough space so you can put your phone right next to it um, as well. So which one does so worry more about Heath walking in a hobby shop or Heath White? Yeah, in a camera store. Uh, b &H Photo, if you don't know, is a New York City camera store that it's pretty famous, but you go in there and you can pretty much walk out of there with anything, anything you want. Oh, well, I misread out oh, to your face. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Um, I do appreciate it. Uh, it, it's still a process. I still have a lot of work to do, but it's operational and I am going to do two, two things in conjunction with each other. When I, when I have time to be in the room, in the layout room, I will work on, you know, things like track work and scenery and, uh, you know, in the room type stuff. When I then go up to the apartment and I'm sitting on the couch with the TV on or I'm doing whatever, um, I try and spend some time working on either the operations. Uh, most of Dennis was asking me earlier how much time I spent working on the tablets uh, or on, yeah, on the, uh, on the tablet stuff. Uh, most of my tablet work was uh, spent sitting on the couch upstairs. It wasn't spent down here in the train room. The entire system down here uh, is remotely accessible for me. 
Uh, I use uh, Splash Top, which is like a team viewer or whatever. So I can log in down here and access everything and do anything I need to do. So yeah, it's, you know, it's coming, uh, it's coming along. I, I'm, I'm very happy uh, where things are at. Uh, a lot of it was through the support of YouTube and all of the things that I've learned on YouTube because it really was YouTube that took me out of my current mindset of what model railroading was and what model railroading could be. So uh, th this is a lot of this, you know, is all uh, because of, uh, of YouTube and this community and all of the people that I've met through this. So if you're ever in the New York City area, uh, you know, reach out to me and let's see if we can't uh, get you a visit uh, to the layout if you want to come and operate on it. And, uh, you know, keep your eyes out. One day we might just be, might be operating remotely as well. We might need uh, people to do that uh, as well. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's a thing, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's been an adventure. Uh, this is Riverside Transfer 2.0. Riverside Transfer 1 is gone. It didn't work. Uh, rebuilt. And now I've got something that I hope, I hope when I uh, invite up some more experienced operators that they find it as fun to operate on uh, as I do. From the city that never sleeps, farewell model citizens. It's all about humanity.